Brandon, are you here? Let's see, are you Jess, Nicole, Kevin, Robert, Tony, did I miss you? I saw Tony a while ago, then he disappeared. Can you guys see Tony? Yes? Huh. I don't see him. There you go. You got a haircut. Good job. <laughs> Looks like it's only Brandon we're missing. Okay, we'll start in two minutes. Okay, here comes Brandon. Perfect. Can you hear me? Yes, good morning pharmacy, it's Friday. Okay, you got long weekend. I know Brandon, this is too early for you, huh? It looks like you really scrambled to get out of bed, but good job for trying, okay? Um, let's start. So a couple of things, announcement number one, it's a long weekend, okay? This is one of the few holidays that um, Pima observes Memorial Day, okay? So if you have a family member, parents or siblings or cousins, um, thank you for their service, but 
Memorial Day is for the fallen heroes. So it's hard to really um, say that, like, happy Memorial Day. Anyway, um, town's going to be crazy. To those of you working on this trip, brace yourselves. Good luck, Jess. Brandon, who else working on this trip? <laughs> you can just like give me strength, Lord. Yeah. Okay. So gather all that courage and strength that you need. Try to rest, but do not forget finals is on Tuesday. You got three tests on Tuesday. When you open your to do today folder, you'll see three tests. You should see three tests. Okay. Drug words, week three. Okay, quiz, abbreviation week three quiz, and pharmacology finals. That's only for pharmacology. Okay, then open your customer service folder. Okay, you have another final in your customer service folder. So a total of four. Is that clear? Put that post it right on your Computer, put it on your calendar, set an alarm, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, let me tell you schedules. Okay, Monday, no school. Okay, Robert, last day for skills for you today. You gotta run to the campus, correct? Yes, finish that up so I can, I can check off your skills, okay? And I don't have to put an incomplete or a failing grade on your customer service, okay? Everybody else is done with their skills, correct? In customer service okay so you're not required to go to the campus today however who's going to the campus hands up except for robert kevin you going tony you're going for iv not kevin did you tell that to miss trisha uh i did not ma'am but i kind of figured you know it's three hours for in class and i was just like i i don't know <laughs> but give her a heads up email her okay, okay? okay. email her as we uh, as we speak or as we as we going as we're going over because if you're on schedule treat it like you're scheduled in a pharmacy okay so if you're going to call out call out at least 24 i'd like to do the 24 hour rule but if it's really an emergency make it a 2 hour to 3 hour yes robert you're raising your hand wait what am i going to class for i thought you're going to the campus to finish your customer service skills i already did on Wednesday. Oh, Wednesday. I thought you were waiting for Friday. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's why you said today. Okay. Sorry about that. Ms. Trisha, I haven't talked to Ms. Trisha regarding that. Um, she didn't give me a heads up that you finished on Wednesday. So um, I'll verify that and then I'll check all of your skills for customer service. Okay. Again, four tests on Tuesday. I won't see you Monday. Okay. I won't see you Monday, so it's only announcements on Blackboard you will see. Take note, there are four tests, okay? Drug words and abbreviations, the same. Tuesdays, 45 minutes each. Access opens from 7 a.m. till 2 p.m. Pharmacology finals, an hour. Access opens 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. Our time, Pacific time. Okay. Customer service finals, an hour. Access opens 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. Now that's a total of how many hours now? For all four tests, Remy. For all four tests. Four hours. That's actually three and a half hours. One hour, one hour, plus an hour and a half, because 245 minutes, right? Okay. Plan accordingly. That's why I extended it up to 2 p.m. Okay. I don't have a particular order. What classes are you going to take first whatsoever? Okay. To give you some relief, we're not going to do presentations. However, you will be assigned one slide to upload, okay, to upload in the Monday folder. Even if we're on a holiday on Monday, I will still put the folder in the Monday folder. All you need to do is to upload the drug 
PowerPoint slide assigned to you. Same as usual. Is that clear? Okay. Now let's go to that drug assignment. Get ready. We're on week three, so you should be looking on numbers 21 to 31. Ready, Raimi, Evista. Boy Femring. Kevin Ferris Sulfate. Nicole Forteo. Atziri Fossamax. Tony Glimeperide. Noah Glucagon. Robert Humalog. I'm skipping glucophage. Jess Lantis and Brandon Lasix. Noah, what do you need to do on Monday? What's gonna appear in the Monday folder? What are you gonna do with this drug assignment? What are you gonna do on Monday, even if it's a so holiday? My bad. Noah, what was that? Submit it. Submit it, upload, just yes. like usual. Just like usual, uploaded by 10 a.m., okay? Just for homework credit, okay? It helps you review too, of course. Okay, any questions? Questions, guys? Questions before we proceed? Okay, two minutes break, okay? Before I move on. I'm going to discuss certain topics that are important, not only for final exams, but for the PTCE, okay? Um, major topics like insulin, okay? Diuretics, okay? I'm gonna put focus on that. Diuretics is one, two, about um, a third of your final exam, okay? So two minutes, set your timer, I'll be right back.
Okay, welcome back. That was quick. I just wanted you to flip your switches, okay? Real fast. We'll do abbreviations. Let me record. Okay, we'll do abbreviations review for week three. And then I'm going to add some medical terminologies, abbreviations that may come up on your final exam, okay? That's not in the week one to week five, okay? But it is in the textbook. So you might wanna take notes on this one because this will come up on your, may come up on your final exam, okay? It's taught related to the excretory and reproductive system topics, clear? Okay, let's focus on week three abbreviations first. Okay. Stat. When you say stat, what does that mean? Um, Jess isn't back yet. I was about to call her. Aziri, what does stat mean? Like immediately. Immediately, okay. All caps, S-T-A-T, -T, stat, okay. When you say stat, when an order is stat, what does that mean? How long should you have it ready? It should be delivered, ready and delivered within. Should be ready within. How many minutes? 15. 15 minutes. Stat order. Okay. Remember your Lasix um, role playing in the campus? There was a Lasix stat order in one of the role playing scenarios. You remember that? This is just recent. You should not forget. Okay. So that's why the nurse yelled at. The pharmacy technician in that role playing scenario. Yeah, because the nurse thinks that you don't know what stat means. Okay, so stat is immediately take note of the spelling of immediately M I I M M E D I A T E L Y immediately on your abbreviation test spelling counts wrong spelling is wrong capitalization counts. Uh, punctuation counts. So if there's a period or a, or a hyphen, um, I will verify that and I will highlight that. Okay. Vitamin. What's the abbreviation for vitamin, Lawrence? Cop, cops lock V I T. Okay. It doesn't have to be capital V, just so you know. Okay. okay. It can be V I T, period. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'm telling you which, which one. Okay. It's just V I T. Okay. Vomiting. What's the abbreviation for vomiting? Um, Kevin. Capital V. Capital V. It's hard to tell which one's capital, right? When you're writing it, just like X, you can't tell whether X is capital or lowercase. So when it becomes nausea and vomiting, what's the abbreviation, Kevin? Uh, nausea and vomiting would be NNV. Very good. NNV. Okay. Negative. What's the abbreviation for negative, Noah? N-E-G. N-E-G, correct. Okay. N-E-G. Can be all caps, can be lowercase. However, what's the symbol for negative, Noah? The subtraction sign. The minus sign, correct. Okay. Tony, positive. Abbreviation for positive. POS. POS, okay. We don't use POS very much because POS, all caps, is point of sale. In pharmacy, we have a POS, a point of sale system, right, in retail. So we usually use the plus sign. The minus and the plus sign for negative minus, for positive um, plus, sometimes the doctors put a circle, okay, put it inside a circle just so you know. Here comes the other ones. Um, HSV. Robert, HSV, what does that stand for? Herpes simplex virus. Very good. Herpes simplex virus. Okay, that's very common, especially during the winter time. Okay, um, you see the mouth source. Sometimes, yeah, that's herpes, okay? It's very, very, very communicable, okay? Herpes can be 
Um, a sign that your immune system is down. That's why during the winter time, you will see um, it's more prevalent and we, in, we increase our what? Vitamin C intake and zinc intake, okay? So HSV, okay? What's HBV, Ramey? Hepatitis B virus. Very good, okay? Sometimes we abbreviate it as Hep B, but if we're talking about the virus specifically, it's HBV, hepatitis B virus. Very common misspelled hepatitis, H-E-P-A-T-I-T-I-S, because Americans do not pronounce it as hepatitis, or sometimes we misspell the I replace the I with an A like aspirin or take it out, okay? So take no T-I-T-I-S, hepatitis B virus. This is um, a vaccine as well. There is a vaccine av available for hepatitis B. Remember I told you if your tip is, if there's a vaccine available, most likely in 80%, it's caused by a virus, okay? You follow? TB is caused by a, vac by a bacteria. However, TB, tuberculosis, has a vaccine, okay? But 90, I'd say 95%, okay? If you're gonna be asked, what is the causative factor or causative agent for this particular disease? Think of it, is there a vaccine for it? That's how you can make an educated guess. If there's a vaccine for it, it's caused by a virus. You follow? So COVID-19, is there a vaccine for it? Yes, it's caused by a virus. Okay, SARS-CoV-2. Okay, here we go. STD. Um, Lawrence, what's STD? Sexually transmitted disease. Very good. If it becomes STI, hint, hint, wink, wink, final exam. STI, what do you think that will be? If STD is sexually transmitted disease, what's STI? Infection. Sexually transmitted infection. Okay, very good. Sexually transmitted infection, okay. AIDS, A-I-D-S, Brandon. Right. Uh, acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. Okay, very good. So it's acquired immunodeficiency. Okay. Immunodeficiency can be one word, but we prefer immuno hyphen deficiency. What's S? Syndrome. Okay. Acquired is A C Q. U-I-R-E-D, acquired immuno-deficiency syndrome, okay. Here are the others that's not in your packet that may come up on your final exams or help you with a PTCE review. Ready? What's ED, Tony? Excuse me? ED. Capital E, capital D. On the abbreviations? It's not in the packet, I said, but it's part of the topic in pharmacology, excretory and reproductive. So I've said this in the audio lecture, and it's also in the chapters assigned to you on the textbook. What's ED? You want to call somebody? Kevin is raising his hand. It's uh, erectile dysfunction. Erectile dysfunction. Very good. Yeah, that's what I, I assumed. That was my first thought, but I was like, well, why would that be in the urinary system? I guess it makes sense. <laughs> Excretory. I was, I was lost. Yeah. Reproductive. 
right? So reproductive would be the male reproductive system and the female reproductive system. Okay, erectile dysfunction. Take note, this function is spelled as D-Y-S, F-U-N-C-T-I-O-N. Okay, um, UTI, I've mentioned this so many times. Noah, UTI. Urinary tract infection. Urinary tract infection, okay? These abbreviations may come up as a fill in the blanks on your final exam. So be very careful when typing, okay? Because if you misspell, it's wrong, okay? Next one. Um, HIV, we just did it, right? Um, HIV, this was a previous week uh, abbreviation. Nicole, HIV. I only know this one, I forgot the other one. <laughs> okay, she said there's a, a delay on her Wi-Fi. That's why her responses are delayed. We were like waving all, uh, we're gone already. She's still just waving to us. Okay, HIV, Tony. AIDS? It's the causative factor for yeah, AIDS. It is, is the virus yeah. that causes AIDS, right? Mm -hmm. what, but what does HIV stand for? Uh, I don't know if I've ever, I don't know. <laughs> this is it the abbreviation? You want to call your friend raising your hand right there? Another one? Look at the camera! Somebody's trying to help you. I can't, I can't see everybody. Somebody, please, if you got an answer. Robert me. wants to help you. Tony, I got you this time for once. <laughs> uh, human immunodeficiency virus. Correct. Human. You know, you got two buddies you can always rely on. Handsome and a good friend. What more can I ask for? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Human immunodeficiency virus. Okay. This time you don't have to put a hyphen and capitalize the letter D because it's HIV, okay? Be very careful, okay? If HIV is human immunodeficiency virus, HPV is, who knows what HPV is? This is also a vaccine given to women. Remember, they give this in school. Raimi, you should be familiar with this. They started giving this to girls at school. Yes, Kevin. HPV is a human papilloma virus. Human papilloma virus, correct, okay. Up to 27 years old, okay. They started giving this to girls at school. Why? What is this? What does this cost, Kevin? Do you know? HPV is what? The causative factor for what? Um, I, I believe it causes like the inability to um, fertilize and like to have babies, right? Or ovarian um, cancer. Or ovarian cancer. Ovarian cancer. Um, don't you, aren't you more susceptible to STIs as well from it? Cervical cancer? Cervical cancer, okay. It is preventive for cervical cancer, okay. But the human papilloma virus, when it infects you, it is a sexually transmitted infection, okay. But very good, Raimi. It is preventive for cervical cancer, okay. But only up to 20, the studies <clears throat> showed it's effective up to, up to, uh, 27 years of age, okay? Just more studies are um, directed or conducted towards that age group, okay? I'm, I'm not saying that it's not gonna be effective at all anymore, but the effectivity decreases after 27 years of age, okay? So we really, really recommend having it or getting it prior to the age of 27, okay? HPV. Sexually, it's a, um, it can be a cause of a sexually transmitted infection. Take note, papilloma, okay? P-A-P-I, 
L L O M A. Um, let's talk about hormones now. Oh no, one more disease. PID. Who has heard of PID? No one? Pelvic inflammatory disease. Pelvic inflammatory disease. Okay. And then let's talk about hormones. HRT. I mentioned this a couple of times during lecture. Okay. I mentioned that a lot of the closed door pharmacies, specialty pharmacies here, make ointments, creams, and lotions that's specific to HRT. What's HRT? I mentioned this in the audio lectures in the reproductive system. Anyone? HRT stands for, not heart. Hormone. Yes, Lawrence? It's a hormone replacement therapy. Very good. Hormone replacement therapy. As we get older, what our hormones what drop production of hormones drop so um specifically women okay um all of this menopausal signs and symptoms that they're experiencing or that we're experiencing i'm part of that <laughs> I cannot say there anymore, okay? Of course, it's, it's uncomfortable, so we wanted um, relief from that, okay? That's where the hormone replacement therapy comes into play, okay? FSH, anyone who knows FSH, all caps. I mentioned this in the reproductive system audio lecture as well. Follicle stimulating hormone. Go back to the audio lecture. We don't have all the time today. Okay. Follicle stimulating hormone. And then the last one would be PSA. Okay. This is for male. Okay. This is what they look at when males get tested, especially when they're in their 50s. Okay. Robert, what is it? Prostate PSA. specific antigen. Very good. Prostate specific antigen antigen okay prostate specific and antigen good morning okay so sorry my son just woke up and he saw a <laughs> robux e-gift card on his laptop so he got excited yeah because um i just finished fourth grade <laughs> Okay, that is our abbreviations. Okay, so it's both drug words week three, okay, and some abbreviations and terminologies for excretory and reproductive system. Okay, next topic. You want a two minute break before I go to the next topic again? Two minutes? No? Aziri said no. <laughs> I do not want any break at Ziri. I just want to get it over with. <laughs> I wanted to show you a picture of a little boy being sprayed with water from a hose. And that's how you're going to feel later. Okay? Like all that information on your face, especially if you didn't listen to all your lectures by the day. Okay, that's how you're gonna feel today. I told you it's gonna be a lot today, I warned you. Okay, let's talk about diuretics. Okay, on your packet, let me pull up your packet. You wanna pull up your packet? Cause this is another major topic on your final exam, the diuretics part. And then we'll proceed with insulin. After insulin, I'm going to do a review for your finals, like ask you questions. I'm going to quiz you. 
Let's see your packet. So I can relate to what page? Pharmacology. Who feels overwhelmed right now? I'm trying to chunk it. Okay, that's why I wanted a two minute break, like switch on and off for a bit. Here we go, excretory system. Let me find a page. So in the audio lectures, I talked about urinary tract infection. Who, who heard that? The different types of UTIs, yeah? Okay. Not news anymore. If you didn't listen to the audio lectures, you're gonna have a problem. Because you should at least, at least listen to the audio lectures three times. Okay. I talked about urinary tract infection in the audio lectures. I talked about antibiotics, okay, which is very important, okay, especially in treating infections, okay. I can't highlight it enough, okay. A couple of things I want to highlight, okay. So urinary tract infection is caused by bacteria, so we use antibiotics, okay. Remember bacteria, antibiotics, vaccine preventive for vir viral infection. Okay, but if you have a viral infection, you should use antiviral. If you have a fungal infection, you should use an antifungal. You follow? Okay. How is UTI treated usually with antibiotics? So let's talk about antibiotics first. Okay, there are different types of antibiotics and I wanna go over them real fast because you've heard me say this in the audio lectures already. Okay, we have different generations antibiotics, but I'm gonna pick specific ones, important ones, especially so it helps you remember the drugs because there are giveaway roots, prefixes and suffixes, okay? And I'm gonna tell you that, okay. First, let's talk about bacteria infecting us, okay? And the antibiotics, okay. When we have a bacterial infection, how do we know? One of the signs before going to a doctor, how do you know that you have an infection? What are the signs? Um, a theory, do you know? Like what manifests in your body or on you when you have an infection? What's the number one sign or symptom? You're talking about like the UTIs, right? In general, infection, if you have an infection. Like pain? What was that? Like it hurts, like pain, like if you have an infection, it usually hurts, especially with like UTIs. Yeah, pain in the area where the infection is. So if it's an ear infection, there's pain right by the ear area. If uh, there's uh, UTI, there's pain in urinating, okay? Hang on one second. Okay, I told my son this is not the place where he can chat right now because he's on summer break. So he's gonna be chatting gaming. He's not doing homework, so he's not gonna be quiet. So I said, get out of here <laughs> if you're gonna be chatting, okay? But if you're gonna play quietly, you can stay in here, okay? I'm sorry, but the joys of working from home. Anyway, <laughs> you know the drill, it's the same. So um, if I make you accountable for something, I do the same for this one. Okay, so going back, there's pain. That Ziri said, what else? What manifests? Ramey. Like swollenness. Swelling and inflammation. Yeah, if there's an infection, sometimes you see swelling and inflammation right away. Like say for example, ear infection. Well, it has to be done through an otoscope to see it. Okay, um, what other infection? Sometimes it really shows, but what's, what's another thing that's evident? Another symptom that you have an infection? Robert, can you guess? Uh, could like, kind of like feeling feverish. There you go, fever. 
fever is a manifestation or a symptom of a, of infection. Okay. But fever is not a disease. You got to remember that. Okay. Fever is your body's way of saying your immune system's way of saying I'm doing my job. Okay. What does that mean? A bacteria infected you. Okay. It's something foreign. You follow? It's not a normal thing that your body has. It's something foreign inside your body that's trying to attack you or attack your immune system. So your immune system is trying to fight it. And that's when fever happens. It is a sign that your immune system is working. Who got their COVID-19 vaccine? Hands up. Okay. Who got flu vaccines anytime in their life? Hands up. Okay. Remember, we always tell you as pharmacists, you may have fever. Yeah. After the injection or the immunization or the vaccination. Why? You're being injected with a virus that is foreign to you or to your body. So what is your immune system going to do? Attack it. So you will have fever. Okay. That's why we say, let your immune system do its job in fighting it. That's why we do recommend not to take acetaminophen or Tylenol or ibuprofen prior going to your immunization, but take it once it started manifesting, okay? So that your body can start fighting it off, fighting it off, okay? So when we give flu shots or whatever vaccine, we always say, you may have this, you may have soreness, you may have swelling, and this is what you do, okay? Um, usually um, a stress ball helps, especially the arm where the injection happens. And then we tell them to just take Tylenol or ibuprofen, acetaminophen or ibuprofen after experiencing fever. Once you start experiencing fever or chills. Okay, why? We always say, you don't have the flu. When you get the flu shot, you don't get the flu. Okay? You get flu-like symptoms. You may get flu-like symptoms. Why? You're being injected with a virus. Yeah? But what happens is you've, you're being, you've been injected with a virus, right? So your immune system is going to attack it, right? Okay. What do you think the next time the real virus or that particular virus attacks your system? What do you think will happen, Kevin, next time? Uh, the next time you probably won't even develop symptoms, or if you do, it's like very, very rare. Very good. Okay. So what's going to happen is your immune system will recognize it this time. Yeah? Think of me as your immune system. Oh, I've seen this before. Oh, I've fought this before. Oh, I know what to do. This is not foreign to me anymore. Now you understand how vaccine works? Okay, you may have a little bit of it, but hospitalization may not happen, okay? Talking about vaccines, um, we do have, we have the advantage of getting, I talked about US having uh, the adults in the US, 50 to 80% of the adults in the US have been vaccinated, so we got that herd immunity right now in the US, okay? Pandemic is worldwide, okay? Not yet the whole world, okay? And then Pfizer, Pfizer was approved for 16 to 17 year old uh, months ago, but it was recently approved for 12 to 15 years old, okay? And then news three days ago, Moderna was also approved for 12 to 17 years old. We have the advantage here in the US because of three First, vaccines for COVID have been manufactured or are being manufactured here in the U.S., okay? So I want you to understand the concept of vaccine, okay? How our immune system is strengthening or being strengthened by this virus. The next time it attacks us, okay, it's not foreign anymore, okay? And then 
Moderna and Pfizer, 100% effective, even up to this new age group, proven. So hospitalization is zero for those who got immunized or vaccinated. Okay, going back again. So vaccine is preventive for the viral, viral infection, okay? Antibiotics is treatment for bacterial infection. Okay, so bacteria this time attacks you. Fever happens in all the other signs that you said if you have an infection, okay? But usually we get swabbed, okay, to see whether we have a bacterial infection or a viral infection or a fungal infection, okay? If after the testing, it appears that it is caused by a bacteria, we are given antibiotics, you follow? We are given antibiotics, okay? And antibiotics, what? Antibiotics are for bacteria, huh? So if they tested that it's caused by virus, they should not be giving you antibiotics. Is that clear? Is that clear, okay? Because bacterial resistance, which my next topic will be, is very, very important, okay? So a couple of things when we're talking about antibiotics before I go to specific antibiotics, okay? When you're given antibiotics, the do's and don'ts, do you have the do's and don'ts for antibiotics here in your packet? I don't think so. I think it's a different packet, okay? The do's and don'ts of antibiotics, I wanna talk about that. When you're given a prescription of antibiotics, you should finish the entire prescription, okay? Follow the instructions. If it says every eight hours, every eight hours. If it says two times a day, two times a day. If it says every 12 hours, every 12 hours. If it says up to 21 days, up to 10 days, up to seven days, up to three days, you have to take it for that long, okay? Another thing, okay. That's my alarm, we're just supposed to start at 10 a.m. Zoom, but we've already gone one hour, okay? So follow the instructions, okay? Discard excess antibiotics, if there's any. Do not share or take leftovers, leftover prescription. What does that mean? Oh, you know what? My sister had the same exact symptoms last week and she has a leftover antibiotics, okay? I'm gonna take it because I think we got the same bacteria. Do not do that. Number one, it's not enough to finish the regimen. You follow? Which leads me to the next, do not. Do not stop taking your antibiotics even if you feel better already. You heard me say that, right? Over and over and over. This is what happens. Say for example, a seven day or a 10 day regimen for an antibiotic because you have a bacterial infection. Day one, you don't feel anything. Day two, you don't feel anything. Day three and day four, the patients feel better. Yeah, so what happens? They stop taking it. What's gonna happen? Yes, Tony, I described it vividly. Uh, it's gonna become resistant, the bacteria. Okay. So the bacteria, that specific strain will become resistant. Picture this, you just tickled the bacteria. Yeah, you just tickled the bacteria. So what happens? The bacteria goes to the gym, okay? Works out, come back stronger and in mutated form. That's how super bugs are made, why? It's our fault because we didn't finish the antibiotic as prescribed. 
The next time they take that particular antibiotic, ooh, I've tasted this before. Now it's just Gatorade and Powerade for them because they had a taste of it, yeah? So the resistance, the resistance doesn't happen to you. It happens to the bacteria, that specific strain. You follow? So we're affecting the entire world. This is an important topic, okay? I had a student who said, Miss L, you know, when my, when my pharmacist prescribes antibiotic, I hear you at the back of my head saying, the bacteria goes to the gym, come back stronger and in mutated form. It is true though, okay? I just made that picture in your head, so you gotta remember that. Finish, we always say this, finish the prescription, discard excess, okay? So the, there won't be any bacterial resistance. This is exactly the reason why when we're dosing amoxicillin, we give them high dose. Why? Bacteria doesn't get affected by amoxicillin anymore. That's the number one most abused antibiotic in the world. Okay, why? Other countries still give amoxicillin without prescription, pharmacies. Okay, Latin American countries, you can still go to the pharmacy and get three capsules of it just for the day, not the entire prescription. And then people stop taking it after three days. That's why we have all the super bugs. You follow? Okay, that's why it's the most abused. Now, when we're giving amoxicillin, it has to be high dose or we resort to giving another generation which is augmented amoxicillin and clavulinate potassium, okay? Because amoxicillin doesn't work anymore, okay? Can Antibiotic. You spell, can you spell that? Augmented? No, the uh, convulinated potassium. <laughs> it should be in your packet, I'll type it, okay? Can somebody type it? If not, I'll type it later. Okay, augmented is amoxicillin and clavulinate potassium. Okay, I'll do that in a bit. Antibiotic, a chemical substance with the ability to kill or inhibit the growth of bacteria by interfering with a bacterial life processes, okay? It can destroy the cell wall. It can destroy the actual bacteria, okay? We have two types of antibiotics, okay? When you hear the word Broad spectrum, broad, broad, broad spectrum, okay? It means that it's effective to both gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria, okay? If I'm to classify, I mean bacteria, two classifications would be the gram-positive and the gram-negative bacteria. Listen to this, gram positive plus, think about this, okay? Gram positive, think about this, gram positive plus, it has a cell wall, a thick cell wall, which we call a peptido, peptidoglycan layer, okay? Has a cell wall, that's why plus, gram positive. A gram negative, doesn't have a cell wall, or if there is, it's very, very, very thin. Having said that, which one do you think is more difficult to kill? Uh, the gram positive. The gram positive will be more difficult to kill. Okay, so we have antibiotics that are specific to gram positive bacteria. We have antibiotics that are specific to gram-negative bacteria, but we also have what we call a broad-spectrum antibiotic, which is effective in killing or interfering bacterial life processes for both gram-positive and gram-negative. And you follow? 
I'm telling you terminologies right now before I jump to UTI and the drugs used to treat UTI. Are you still with me? Okay. Next one. Any questions before I proceed? It's like, oh, that's a long sequel. Uh, that's a long, um, what's that? Prologue, Miss L, before the bacteria. I can't just have you memorize antibiotics without you understanding the bacterial process, how antibiotics kill bacteria, how it works in the body in destroying the bacterial processes. I have to break that down in simple terms. Was I able to do that for you? Did you understand? Yes? Yes? The terminologies, okay. What do you call the type of antibiotic that can kill both gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria? Zero. Oh. oh, sorry, Noah. Go ahead, Noah, since you unmuted. Broad spectrum. Broad spectrum. You got to remember that, okay? What do you call a group of bacteria that has a peptidoglycan layer or a cell wall? Ramey. I missed that part. I was going to ask you that, actually. I wrote okay. that down. Siri, can you help? What did I say? With cell wall plus. So what is that called? Ziri? You said it was what? You said, is it the gram positive? Yes. The way I remember is with, so it has an extra, so plus. Without would be Tony. Without cell wall or very thin cell wall. Uh, <laughs> that one I didn't catch. I was I caught the positive. Kevin, <laughs> okay. Gram negative. Gram negative, positive with cell wall, negative without. It's easy to remember, plus and minus, okay? Now here we go, urinary tract infection, okay? Now let's tie the bacteria, the bacteria, <laughs> and the antibiotics now, okay? Urinary tract infection is treated with antibiotics because it's an infection caused by bacteria, okay? I always say this and I said this in the audio lecture, ladies, we wipe front to back, not back to front, okay? That's one of the causes of urinary tract infection, okay? It's funny, but it's true. Another one, why are children or babies prone to urinary tract infection? Why do you think? I said this in the audio lecture. Why do you think babies are prone to urinary tract infection? Tony. Okay, because they're sitting on wet diaper. Okay, I said this in the audio lecture. Why are women more prone to urinary tract infection than men, Brandon? Why are women more prone to urinary tract infection than men? I said this in the audio lecture too. I'm oh, sorry, I don't remember. Ah, uh, Lawrence, do you remember why are women more prone to urinary tract infection? Think about it. Jess? <laughs> Maybe we can help this man understand why we are more prone to urinary tract infection. Um, because we have a vagina. <laughs> Very good answer, okay? <laughs> okay, so what she meant was because of the anatomical structure of our reproductive system. It is open. Think about it. Compared to men, the opening is bigger for women compared to men's opening, don't you think? So the probability of us getting infected is higher. You mentioned oh, no. douches in the audio lecture, like douching. <laughs> See, I talked about douching. I talked about so many things in the reproductive system. Some are even funny. 
I talked about how some old Chinese Asian pee, like in restrooms, like sitting on a toilet. I talked about that. You should be listening to the audio lecture. You're missing a lot because I can't tell all of those right away. Or I can't tell all of those again and again and again. We don't have the luxury of time, okay? Audio lectures are a must. They're not optional, okay? So I talked about douching as well, which I'm not going to talk about right now. You got to listen to it. I talked about like old Asian, like how is it for, um, there are still some places in China wherein um, when, they, when they urinate, it's still just a hole right there. It's, anyway, so listen to that, okay? I mentioned about sit like a lady, not like a monkey. I mentioned those. Oh, see, Raimi's nodding. I had stories in pharmacology, okay? A lot of those stories are funny, okay? I don't say names of patients, but I tell you stories, okay? Anyway, going back. <laughs> Jess didn't say it very nicely, but what she meant was the anatomical structure of women, okay, is more open compared to men. Think about that, okay? Take note, UTI is a sexually transmitted disease. Okay, oh my God. Thank God in my life, I've never had urinary tract infection, but women are prone to it, okay? Babies are prone to it, okay? Let's talk about drugs now. Um, the antibiotic needed depends on the site of infection, whether it's upper urinary tract infection or lower urinary tract infection. It also depends on the type of bacteria that's causing the infection. Okay. And also, if the patient is allergic to certain drugs, we have to certain antibiotics. Some patients are allergic to sulfa drugs, which a lot of our treatments are. And the doctor has to consider that or the prescriber has to consider that. Antibiotics used to treat uncomplicated lower UTI, usually a three-day therapy, a three-day therapy. It's on your packet. We got Bactrim DS or Septra DS. Okay, take note. I want to let you know. Sulfamethoxazole is abbreviated as SMZ, all caps. And Trimethoprim TMP. The spelling is in your packet. SMZ TMP, that is the generic. It's a combination. That's the generic of your Bactrim DS and Septra DS. Who knows what DS stands for in the brand name? Anyone? Can you guess? It's actually double strength. Because Bactrim is half the strength of the double strength. Septra is half the strength of the, of the double strength. DS stands for double strength, okay? Kills bacteria by interfering with the enzyme that helps form folic acid. Okay. Bacterial cells produce their own folic acid, which is necessary for their growth. Another antibiotic used to treat uncomplicated lower UTI would be your floxacin. Take note, hint, hint, wink, wink. This is a common suffix. Floxacin. Floxacin is under the group fluoroquinolone or it can be oxacin quinolone, okay? Fluoroquinolone is spelled as fluoro, F-L-U-O-R-O, quinolone, it's Q-U-I-N-O-L-O-N-E, or just quinolone, okay? Suffix, floxacin is fluoroquinolone or oxacin is quinolone, you follow? It interferes with the enzyme halting the growth, the growth of the bacteria. These drugs are eliminated, your quinolones are eliminated by the kidneys. So they go through the ure urinary tract, killing the bacteria at the site of infection. Okay. Usually when a patient is on an antibiotic, say for example, I use the restroom at school, okay? Somebody, somebody went in the cubicle before I do. I can tell if the person who, who was before me is on an antibiotic. 
Okay, usually the smell is so strong. Okay, that's one of the signs. Okay, I can smell antibiotic from urine. <laughs> Tony's like, yeah, I can smell it, it's too strong. Okay, anyway, so Cipro. Okay, Cipro is a brand. Cipro fluxacin is the generic. Levaquin is levofloxacin. Levaquin is a brand. Levofloxacin is the generic. Okay. Of course, we can still give penicillins. However, if patient is allergic to penicillin, we cannot give penicillin based like amoxicillin and augmentin. Okay. Usually we give high dose because I told you amoxicillin has been abused by the entire population of the world. Next one would be your macro bid. Okay, generic is nitrofuran, monohydrate, effective in killing many bacteria that cause UTI. You usually go by sulfa drugs first. You remember, huh? Bactrim DS, Septra DS. However, sulfa methoxazole, it's a sulfa base. If a patient says, I'm allergic to sulfa, then we can't give that to the patient. Can you follow? But that's the drug of choice, the Bactrim DS and the Septra DS, okay? We can also give just the trimethoprim, primsol. It's not sulfa-based, okay? Used for patients who are allergic to sulfamethoxazole or sulfas. Because remember, Bactrim DS and Septra DS is a combination of SMZ and TMP, so it has sulfa. But if the patient says, I'm allergic to sulfa, then the doctor can write the TM, what? TMP. Monural, phosphomycin is another drug. Given as a single dose, one dose only. It is effective in treating organisms that cause uncomplicated UTI, okay? Antibiotics used to treat uncomplicated upper UTI would be seven to 14, seven to 14 day therapy usually. There goes your Bactrim DS again, Septra DS again. Did you see the difference? Usually three-day therapy for lower. You see that? But for upper, seven to 14-day therapy. But it's the same drugs. Bactrim DS, Septra DS, penicillin, Cipro, or Levaquin. Okay, here comes your complicated upper UTI treatment, antibiotics, Levaquin, Augmentin. This is when I type Augmentin. Augmentin is a combination of, of amoxicillin and clavulinate potassium. Okay. Now, if your patient is allergic to penicillin, of course, you cannot give either amoxicillin or Augmentin. This is part of your skills checkoff in the coming days. Patient said allergic to penicillin. She is allergic to penicillin. Patient is given an augmented. What's gonna happen on your computer? It's gonna give you a DUR, drug utilization review. Why? Augmented is penicillin based. And on the patient's profile, it said that the patient is allergic to penicillin. Okay, you follow? Repeat that one more time, please. Okay. So, augmentin is a combination of amoxicillin and clavulinate potassium. Once you get to the campus, you're going to do skills. You're going to receive prescription. Okay. And then you have a patient profile. Okay. Patient said, I'm allergic to amoxicillin. I'm allergic to penicillin. Okay. Then you're given an augmentin. Then the patient is given an augmentin prescription. One of the questions we're going to ask you is what's going to happen? Kevin, you've been in the campus a while. So what's gonna happen? If the patient on the patient's profile said that I'm allergic to penicillin, but the patient received a prescription of Augmentin, what's gonna happen? Uh, it's gonna give you a prompt that says to review the record for their uh, allergies. Correct. And what does that, what is that called? D-U-R. D-U-R, and it stands for? Um, is uh, drug, no, drug utilization review. Very good. Yep. 
drug utiliz utilization review. Do not exit out. It means call your pharmacist. Because the pharmacist has to review what the problem is. It's a prompt saying that there is a problem with a prescription. It can be a drug to drug, drug to allergy, drug to food, drug to disease. The pharmacist will have to review that. That's what it means. Okay. Brandon, you got it? Okay. So you don't proceed. Remember I told you about the night student getting mad at Miss Trisha because she wasn't at she wasn't answering Miss Trisha's question. As you should know, on the patient's profile, there's an allergy, amoxicillin. The patient is given augmentin. Think about the generic of augmentin, amoxicillin and clavulinate potassium. I'm allergic to penicillin, and amoxicillin is under the penicillin group. Follow? This particular topic and case always comes up on the board exam, PTCE. Okay? It'll say, allergic, patient is allergic to penicillin. Which amongst this drugs? should not be given to patient. Or which amongst, patient is allergic to penicillin, given augmentin, why is this? Okay. Yes, Ramey. So then would you give them Levaquin instead? It's not penicillin based. Okay. Here's another information that I'd like you to know. Cephalosporins, another group of antibiotics. Okay, cephalosporins will also cause a DUR if a patient is given, um, is allergic to penicillin. Why? 10% most likely, patients who are allergic to penicillin is 10% most likely allergic to cephalosporins as well. Cephalosporins. There goes your cephalexin. Can you follow? Can you follow? Okay. Patients who are allergic to penicillin are 10% most likely allergic to cephalosporins. So if you're given cephalexin, okay, it's still going to cause a DUR. Okay. Not always 100%, but 10% most likely. Okay. So oh, here yeah. we go. Yes. Who's that? So, so then Levaquin is a cephalosporin? Is that nope. what you're trying to say? Nope. I said levaquin is a quinolone. It's quinolone. not a cephalosporin. It's not a penicillin. Quinolone, fluoroquinolone. So, yes, they can have it. Thank you. Okay. There's so many groups, but we're not even going to go over all the antibiotics. We're going to be specific to the excretory and the reproductive system at this point. Okay. Okay, Le Levaquin, and then here comes your augmented because we need a high dose amoxicillin. And then you have your gentamicin, tobramycin, um, amikacin. They have good coverage against other bacteria that are resistant to other antibiotics, okay? But these are reserved for serious UTI and used in combination with other antibiotics. IV may help too, but that's the last resort, okay? If you're admitted in the hospital. Okay. Aziri mentioned pain when there's infection. So what's a group of drug or what's that terminology? Group of drugs used for pain. Anyone? Used for pain. Uh, analgesics. Okay. We say, <laughs> we say analgesic. I don't want to say analgesic. Okay, Kevin? Because <laughs> it might be misinterpreted as it's for anal. Okay. So we say analgesics. Okay, analgesics is for pain. So if there's pain involved, okay, we give analgesics. But we have specific urinary analgesics. These are drugs used to treat the pain associated with complicated or uncomplicated UTI. Okay. One is phenazopyridin, which can cause the urine to turn orange or brown. Raimi, did you hear my story about this? My joke? No? Well, okay. Benazopyridin. Okay. <laughs> Side effect changes the urine to color orange or brown. Okay. Patient came in the pharmacy with boyfriend. Boyfriend complaining of orange mouth. 
I said that in the audio lecture. I'm not going to elaborate. Okay. So, <laughs> so it's because the side effect of phenazopyridine is what changes the urine color to orange or brown. Okay. Pyridium, phenazopyridine, pyridium is the brand name. Okay. What else? Uristat. Uristat is an over the counter strength of phenazopyridine. Um, medications that can cause problem with urination. Take note. Okay. I'm ending first antibiotics, urinary tract infection. Antibiotics for urinary tract infection. Okay. This is another topic. What are the medications that can cause problems with urination? Corticosteroid like prednisone. TCAs, what are TCAs? What do I mean by TCAs? Tricyclic antidepressants like Elevil and Tofranil, okay? Antihistamine like Benadryl and Dimetap. Antiarrhythmics like Norpase. Calcium channel blockers like Verapamil and Diltiazem. Gastrointestinal meds like Donatol and Lamotil. Opates like Demerol and morphine, okay? So urinary tract infection, antibiotics, it's important for the final exam, important for the national certification exam, okay? My next topic is going to be diuretics, which is a third of your final exam. You wanna take a break or you want me to go? This is another topic, a heavy break. one. Break. Break, diuretics. We have loop, osmotic, thiazide. It's a lot, a lot of drugs. So I want you to flip that switch. Who says break? Hands up. Yes. Okay, five, 10 minutes. Aziri said 10. Okay, 10, set your timers. I'll see you at 10.35, okay?
Okay, you ready? Diuretics. Who remembers what diuretics are? I explained this many times. Yes, Kevin. They are water pills. They're called water pills. It helps us urinate. And in the process of urination, what happens? We excrete excess fluid and excess electrolytes or salt. Okay. It can also be used to reduce high blood pressure. Okay. A diuretic that's available to us from our kitchen is coffee or caffeine. Right. Okay. So diuretics, these are drugs that increase urine output. Primary action of a diuretic on the kidneys is to rid the body of excess fluid and electrolytes or salt. Okay. I talked about edema and I talked about high blood pressure because these are the two, um, uh, what do you call that? States where diuretics can be very important or play an important role. Okay. Let's talk about the different types of diuretic. Okay. On your final exam, this will come up. Okay, as matching, okay, and I want you to remember this. Um, in general, I want you to know, I mentioned this in the last session, that diuretics deplete potassium levels. You remember that? Because potassium is an electrolyte, okay? So when diuretics are used, the potassium le levels are depleted as well, in general. But there's a group of diuretics wherein the potassium levels are not depleted and they're called potassium sparing diuretic. It spares the potassium from getting excreted. That's what the term means, can you follow? So in general, when a patient is given diuretics, the patient is also given potassium supplementation. And you follow? Except for potassium sparing diuretics. This particular information always comes up on the PTCE, okay? As a case, what do you mean by that? Patient complained, um, th there's one case I wrote. So there's a patient and the wife has been giving the husband potassium because the wife read that since my husband is on diuretics, his potassium levels are going to be depleted. Okay. So the wife wasn't telling, bless you, the wife wasn't telling the nurses and the doctors that she's been secretly giving the husband potassium because she read it somewhere that diuretics deplete potassium levels. Okay. The husband went on an emergency situation and the wife admitted that I was giving my husband potassium because I read somewhere that if you're on diuretics, your potassium will be depleted. But the husband was given one of the potassium sparing diuretics. And you follow? This types of cases or situations are actually questions that you may find in the PTCE. A lot of questions on the PTCE are case-based, okay? I wrote a book on medication therapy management, okay? It's a workbook. Um, I'm gonna give you access to that. I wrote it for one of the organizations and they asked me to create, I think 50 cases, 50 situations, 50 cases, and you're gonna figure out what went wrong. Okay, so workbook. It's one of the cases I wrote in there. Okay, so examples of potassium sparing diuretics are aldactone or spironolactone, triamterene, and amylaride. Okay, that's why on your packet it, spe it said specifically you do not need potassium supplement. Take note, supplement is spelled as S U P P L E M E N T. Correct your packet. S-U-P-P-L-E-M-E-N-T, supplement. Potassium is K, we talked about this. Symbol is capital K. It's not the same as vitamin K. It came from the word kalium, K-A-L-I-U-M. Okay, so that's your potassium sparing diuretic. Examples I just said are aldactone or spironolactone, triamterene, and amylaride. Okay, here comes your other diuretics. 
osmotic diuretic. The most popular one is Osmitrol. Osmitrol is the brand name. The generic is Manitol. Osmotic. Osmitrol. The brand name is actually related to the group of diuretics. When I think of the word osmosis, the first thing that comes to mind is boiling eggs. Yeah? Why? Because osmosis happens when you boil an egg. That's how we cook it. The water passes through the shell. The shell is porous. It has what? Holes? Reabsorption. The word is reabsorption. Osmotic diuretics are drugs that inhibit tubular reabsorption of water and electrolytes and increase urinary output. Most likely, the only drug that will come up for osmotic diuretic is osmitrol. Manitol. It's the most popular. Thiazide diuretic. Thiazide. So the drug will have the word thiazide. Hydrochlorothiazide, abbreviated as capital H C T Z, all caps. Hydrochlorothiazide. These drugs promote sodium and water excretion. Remember, I told you, think about the beach where there's water, there's, don't say sand, there's salt. <laughs> okay. Okay, so what happens is these drugs promote sodium and water excretion in the urine, which lowers sodium levels in walls and reduces vasoconstriction. This group of diuretics may cause a loss of potassium. Remember I told you? Everything else except for the potassium sparing ones, okay? Some patients can also become sensitive to sunlight, which we call photosensitivity when on thiazide diuretic. This is one of the side effects of this medications. Next one, loop diuretics. Loop, as the term in, implies, it happens where? And it affects where? The loop of Henle. This drugs inhibit the reabsorption of sodium and chloride in the ascending loop of Henle. It increases urinary excretion of water, sodium, chloride, magnesium, calcium, and potassium. Take note, you want to highlight this. Loop diuretics are stronger than thiazide diuretics. The loss of potassium is the biggest side effect. So if thiazide diuretics may cause what? potassium levels to be depleted, the loop diuretic does that more, okay? Most popular drug under the loop diuretic would be your Lasix furosemide, okay? When you think about osmotic diuretic, the first thing that should come to mind is osmitrol, mannitol. When you think about thiazide diuretic, the first thing that should come to mind is HCTZ, hydrochlorothiazide. When you think about loop diuretic, the first thing that should come to mind is Lasix, furosemide. Hint, hint, wink, wink, okay? Of course, there are other loop diuretics like ethacrinic acid or edocrine, Bumex. Okay, I wanna take, um, I, wanna, I want you to highlight this. Bumex is a brand name. Bumetanide is a generic. Demodex is a brand name. Torsemide is a generic. These two are stronger than Lasix, but they are sulfa-based. So you cannot give them to patients allergic to sulfa drugs. So what will be the drug of choice for these patients? Lasix, furosemide. Can you follow? Okay. And I've already talked about potassium sparing diuretics. You don't need potassium supplementation. It doesn't deplete potassium levels. That's why it's called potassium sparing. It spares the excretion of potassium. Okay. We also have combination. What are these combination? These drugs are among the safest drugs and they do not waste potassium. We have the combination of triamterine and hydrochlorothiazide, which is diazide or maxzide, 
for brand names. And then Zayac is popular by Soprolol and hydrochlorothiazide. Last group, CAIs. CAI stands for carbonic anhydrase inhibitor. It increases the urine volume and it changes to, to an alkaline pH. This is also used to treat glaucoma. Okay, also used to treat glaucoma, CAI. Most popular, Diamox brand name, generic acetazolamide. Diamox brand name, acetazolamide. You will meet Diamox again once we get to the eyes, ears, nose, and throat part in your next pharmacology. Okay, now close your packet. Tell me if this is osmotic, loop, thiazide, potassium sparing combination, or CAI. Close your packet, look at me. I'm gonna quiz you real fast. Okay, matching. Noah, mannitol. I just said this, this should be fresh. Noah, mannitol. Mannitol. Uh, osmotic diuretic. Very good, osmotic, because it's osmitrol. Very good, okay, I know you peaked. <laughs> but I prefer you not peeking, okay? That's why I said, flip your packets over. I want to test you because this is just fresh. Lawrence, amylaride. Amylaride. Come on, if you still want me to review you. Potassium sparing diuretic. A milleride. This was my first one because it is a, I even gave an example of a patient, the wife. Diuretics. Everything is diuretics. What kind? Potassium. Tony? Uh, potassium sparing diuretics. Potassium sparing. This are, you got to remember this. These are the ones that you don't need potassium supplementation. Hydrochlorothiazide. Easy. Robert, HCTZ. It has the word. I was going to ask if you could uh, repeat like the options again. HCTZ, and that stands for hydrochlorothiazide. I know, but I mean, like, which di diuretics am I picking from? <laughs> okay, again, osmotic, loop, thiazide, potassium sparing, combination, or CAI. Is it osmos osmotic? The drug already has the word, <laughs> Tony. It's a thiazide. It's a thiazide diuretic hydro chloro thiazide. It's a thiazide diuretic osmitrol. It's an osmotic diuretic, right, Noah? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Xiri, triamterine. Triamterine. Um, is it the combination? Triamterine, nope. Brandon? Oh, potassium sparing. This is another potassium sparing. Remember, it's aldactone, spironolactone, triamterine, and amylaride. Okay, good job. Last one. Um, let me see. Ramey, acetazolamide. Oh, I have three more, not last, sorry. Thiazide? Thiazide. Is it thiazide, acetazolamide? 
Does it have the word thiazide? I told you, thiazide diuretic will have the word thiazide. Like hydrochlorothiazide, acetazolamide. I just mentioned it. It's also used for glaucoma. Kevin, help. It's a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor. Very good. CAI. Mm -hmm. This one. Jess, bisoprolol hydrochlorothiazide. Your options are osmotic, loop, combination, thiazide, potassium sparing, and CAI. Bisoprolol hydrochlorothiazide. Thiazide? <laughs> it's actually a combination because there's bisoprolol and hydrochlorothiazide. So it's combination. Yeah, it's not just a thiazide, it's a combination. They're more effective, remember? Okay. Next one, Brandon, you meant tonight. I just talked about this. They're stronger. However, they are sofa based. Remember? Bumetanide. What is it? What type of diuretic? Bumetanide. Loop. Loop. Okay. Remember, I told you to highlight Bumex. Okay. Stronger than Lasix. Lasix is loop. Okay. But you cannot give it to patients with sulfur allergies. Last one, ethacrinic acid. Ethacrinic acid. Is that a loop diuretic? Thank you, Ramey. That's another loop diuretic. Very good. Okay. I'm done with diuretics. But I want to review you for the next 10 minutes with the other topics related to excretory and reproductive system. Yeah? Yeah? Yes, no. Okay, let's go. These are based off of your audio lectures and the chapters in the textbook that's assigned in the syllabus. Okay, let's see. Methimazole, this is in the packet, is an antithyroid drug that is 10 times as potent, I highlighted this in the audio lecture, 10 times as potent as levothyroxine, radioactive iodide, potassium iodide, or PTU, or propyl thiouracil. Kevin, it's actually in your packet. Methimazole, it's in the thyroid medications. Hormones. I, I don't recall, ma'am. Okay. It's PTU, propyl thiouracil. Okay. What drug is used to treat hyperthyroidism? I just said a drug, methimazole. For hyper. It's methimazole, okay? This one, another one, reproductive. Trade name for prednisone. Trade name means brand name. Give me a brand name for prednisone. Robert, you have these options. Decadron, Deltasone, Cortef, Aristocort. Trade name Deltazone. for, very good. Deltasone is the correct answer. Which one is a progestin? Which one is a progestin? Lawrence, Femring, Ogen, Premarin, Depoprovera. Which one is a progestin? Femring, Ogen, Premarin or Depo-Provera. It's in your endocrine reproductive system packet. Depo-Provera. Very good, Depo-Provera, here we go. 
Another question, which is assigned to Brandon. Which one is an example of a loop diuretic? Osmetrol, Esidrix, Lasix, or Lozol? This is the drug assigned to you, I remember. Six. Lasix, correct. Okay, which is your furosemide. Most popular loop diuretic. Okay, this one, it's in your lecture packet too. Kevin, which of the following must be kept refrigerated? Ferrisulfate, say yes or no. Think about it. Ferrisulfate, think about it. This is a sign to you. Can you see this in the odor over the counter? Yes. So it doesn't have to be That's refrigerated, right. right? Okay. Hydrochlorothiazide. Yes or no? Does it have to be refrigerated? Hydrochlorothiazide. It's in tablet uh, form. No. Ipoetin alpha. Ipoetin alpha. It's in my lecture. Yes. yes. You see Raimi nodding? Yeah. Remember I said alpha is spelled A-L-F-A -A at this point, not P-H-A. Ipoetin alpha. So this has to be refrigerated. On the PTCE, you may be asked drugs that need to be refrigerated, okay? There's some, uh, some trick questions sometimes, okay? There's an eye drop, okay? And then it's gonna ask you, where can you see this in the pharmacy? And that one of the options is in the ophthalmic section, wrong, because it has to be refrigerated. You see how tricky it can get? Yeah, it's not really tricky, but you have to know the drugs that need to be refrigerated. Ipoetin alpha is one of those drugs that need to be refrigerated. Okay. Back to you, Brandon. What's the generic of Lasix since it's assigned to you? Lasix is a brand. What's the generic? Um, furosemide. Furosemide. Very good. Okay. Talk about diabetes, glycemic. Hypoglycemic, okay, Remy. Which one is an oral hypoglycemic? Okay. Hypoglycemic, so what does it do? Does it um, lower or does it increase blood sugar levels? Hypo, so lower. It lowers the sugar level, so the patient has diabetes or hyper is hyperglycemia, so it decreases. So which one is it? Cortef, Estrace, Glucophage, Provera. Um, Glucophage? Glucophage. Glucophage, hypoglycemic. Supposedly, So is, is not or? Okay, so diabetes is a hyperglycemic state. Yes. Correct? Okay, so what do we give diabetics? Insulin. And yeah. insulin is a hypoglycemic agent. You see there's something wrong with the question here. And I need to go to the test and correct this one. Why? Glucophage does the opposite. Remember in my lecture? What does glucophage do? It actually increases okay. the sugar levels for those who are in a hypoglycemic state. Okay? So really, really, if that is a question, there's no correct answer. But if I put an anti word in there, Okay, or I change it to a hyperglycemic, then it becomes glucophage. Can you follow? Can you follow? Okay. Next one. Which gland secretes glucocorticoids? Which gland secretes glucocorticoids? Nyla, I see you come in. We're going to go on a 10-minute break. Then we're going to do customer service, okay? I'm just finishing this up. <coughs> Noah, 
Yes. Yeah, the adrenal gland. Very good. The adrenal gland. Okay. Which one is the master gland? Which one is the master gland? Tony. Pituitary. Pituitary gland. Correct. Talking about this. This is a common question in the board exam. And I mentioned this. What control substance schedule are anabolic steroids? Anabolic steroids, are they C1, C2, C3, C4, or not controlled? Um, Aziri. Anabolic steroids are, this comes up on the PTCE. Were they? Uh, Schedule one. C Noah's raising his hand, he reviewed, yay, Noah. Schedule three. Very good. Anabolic steroids are Schedule three. This always comes up as a question on the PTCE. Okay. Um, I talked about the guidelines for diabetes. I'm not going to review you on that one. Okay. This one. Androgens reduce the effect of Jess. A. Herbal supplements. B. Pain medications. C. NSAIDs or D. Estrogens. Androgens. Reduce the effects of A, herbal supplements, B, pain medications, C, NSAIDs, D, estrogens. NSAIDs? Nope. Estrogen? Estrogens. Correct. Estrogens. Okay. This one, not in the packet. Cyclosporin is a renal transplant drug that should not be given as a liquid dose in a plastic cup because, okay, there's what we call leaching, L-E-A-C-H-I-N-G, wherein the chemicals in the plastic go or gets absorbed or gets mixed with a liquid or drug. Think about your water bottles in the summertime that's left in the car. What news did we hear? It's cancerous, right? Yeah, so you should not leave water bottles in the car, especially in the Vegas heat, because the, what, the substances in the plastic, what the plastic is made of, melts, and goes with the water. That terminology is called leaching, L-E-A-C-H-I-N-G, okay? And it will cause a chemical reaction in the case of that water, okay? The toxic substance that makes up the plastic, you can take that, okay? Because you left that in your car under the sun. So it is true that it may cause cancer if you drink a water that's left out sitting in the car. That's why we use thermos. We should use thermos, okay? Water bottles should not be left out in the heat. So what happens to this drug, cyclosporin, it should not be served in a plastic cup. Why? Because the drug binds to plastic, which can result in a lower dose than intended because the drug will react to the act to the ingredients of the plastic. Is that clear? Okay, so that is cyclosporin. I wanted to mention that because that's not in the packet. Which of the following medications for osteoporosis requires patient to drink? This is in the packet. Six to eight ounces of water with administration and is only dosed once per month. Patient needs to drink a full glass of water. Let me see, Nicole, alendronate, ibandronate, calcitonin, or pamidronate. Who reported this? Drug words. Who was assigned? It's a dronate, so this is week one. You remember? Alendronate, ibandronate, calcitonin, or pamidronate. Alendronate. Who reported ibandronate? No one? Okay, it's actually ibandronate. You have to take it with a full glass of water and it's only dosed once per month. 
okay? I bandronate. Oh, I think it's Sherlyn or Paolo who reported it. But you have to remember that because they said that in the warning, okay? This one, anatomy, physiology. Um, Aziri, in males, androgens are produced in the ovaries, vas deferens, or testes. The testes. Mm -hmm. um, oh, hang on one second. Let me go back to that question. It's not glucagon, it's glucophage. Was it glucophage? Oh, yeah, I don't have to correct that. Okay, it's not glucagon. Okay, let me go back. Which of the following is an oral hypoglycemic? Correct, it's glucophage. Why? Glucophage generic is metformin. Do not confuse it with glucagon. Okay? Do not confuse it with glucagon. Can you follow? Okay, let me show you something. The word is glucophage. So take note. I wanted to share this. Real quick, which I discussed with you before, and I'll do it again. Can you see my screen? Layout, we're going to do this orientation landscape. Okay, here. Can you see? Okay. So let's talk about, okay, when you say anti, let me clean it, oops, undo, how do I undo? Okay, so let's talk about diabetes real quick and the drugs. When you say hyperglycemia, hyper increase gly glucose level in the blood, remember? Okay, just real quick. Okay, so that can be diabetes. Okay, these are the states hyperglycemia. So when you say hypoglycemia, Low glucose level in the blood. Can you follow? So hyperglycemia, you can think about diabetes. And what is the drug that we give the patient when a patient is in a hyperglycemic state? We give insulin, correct? Insulin lowers blood glucose or glucose level, blood sugar levels, you follow? So insulin then is a hypoglycemic agent or drug. Understand? Don't get confused. So if you're in a hypoglycemic state, you wanna give a hypo, if you're in a hyperglycemic state, you want to give a hypoglycemic agent. And an example of insulin is the brand name glucophage. The generic is metformin. Okay? The generic is metformin. Can you follow? Okay. Let's talk about the opposite of diabetes or hyperglycemia. That state is called hypoglycemia wherein there's low glucose level, low sugar level in the blood. Can you follow? Thumbs up. Yes. So what drugs should you give? A drug that increases, I'm trying to give this to you because the terminologies can be confusing once it's in the test. A drug that increases sugar levels. 
And what do you call that? A hyperglycemic agent. And what is that drug? It's called glucagon. This is actually your sugar pills. Okay? Glucagon. You should not confuse this with glucophage. Glucophage is a brand name for metformin, which is an insulin. Glucagon are the sugar pills. Who has a family member who has um, diabetes? Okay. They, you guys know that when... When they're feeling it, they're feeling dizzy, what do they scramble for? They scramble for sweets, chocolate, or Coke, right? So the glucagon is the sugar pills. It's in a diabetes kit. Why? Because if, if a patient overdoses on insulin, they can just pop the tablet, glucagon, okay? So take note, for hyperglycemia, the state, think about diabetes. The drug is insulin, okay? An example of insulin is metformin generic brand name glucophage, okay? And insulin glucophage metformin is called a hypoglycemic agent because it lowers the sugar level. Can you follow? Thumbs up. You understand? Okay, and then everything is the opposite. What do I mean by that? If the patient is experiencing low sugar levels, what do we need to do? We need to increase the sugar level in the blood. And what should we use? Glucagon. You follow? Glucagon. And glucagon as an agent that increases sugar levels is called a hyperglycemic agent. So going back to the question, which of the following is an oral hypoglycemic agent? If there's an option of glucagon and glucophage, it can be confusing. So what is the correct answer? Which one is an oral hypoglycemic agent? Glucophage. Glucophage, correct, Remy. Or it can be metformin. Or it can be insulin. If I change the question to which one is an oral hyperglycemic agent? Remy, back to you. There's an option for glucophage and glucagon. Which glucagon. one would that be? Glucagon. Very good. Okay, you get it? Okay, why am I highlighting this terminology? I am highlighting this terminology because on the PTCE, they can actually use and use these terminologies because they're medical terminologies. That's why I said this can be confusing if you don't pay attention. Sometimes they even add the anti, anti-hyper. There's a negative, 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 okay? So you got to break it down, hypo, gly, and then emia. And then think, is it an agent? If it's an agent, it's the drug they're talking about. You have to figure out if it's an agent they're asking you or the state, the state of the body. Okay, is that clear? Yes, okay. Um, customer service is easy. That's why I'm not really bothered by it. Okay, Lawrence, which hormone increases the blood sugar concentration? Mineralocorticoid, sex hormone, melatonin, or glucocorticoid? Uh, glucocorticoid. There's a giveaway there, the gluco, okay? Even if you don't know or you skip that part, there is an answer there. I asked this. Um, prior administering a flu shot, the nurse should confirm that the patient is not allergic to eggs. 
Eggs, very good. I saw Ravi say eggs, okay? Remember I told you when we get tired, we have to eat eggs. How do you like your eggs? <laughs> because you get tired of asking. Okay. Um, this one is in your packet. Nicole, what is a major glucocorticoid? Testosterone, estrogen, hydrocortisone, or aldosterone? A major glucocorticoid. Testosterone, estrogen, hydrocortisone, or aldosterone? I talked about this drug specifically. During our drug words. Uh, the hydro. Very good. The hydrocortisone. I'll end right there. Okay. Ravi's like, yes. No one, Ravi seems like they really reviewed and listened to the audio lectures. Maybe when no one was working at the um, auto shop of his dad, he is probably listening to it. And hopefully you're in your headphones when you do that. Okay. So that other people, so that other people don't hear me. <laughs> okay. I did ask you everything. Okay, so you have to review, listen to the audio lectures. However, who wants a copy of this recording for the review for pharmacology? Yes, no, okay, let me pull it up now. So I can send you, it's up to you to bookmark it, okay? So I can send you the link. I'll send you on a 15 minute break, which is perfect because customer service is easy. Very, very practical. Okay, let me go back, send you the link now before we go. Okay, I'll see you guys at 11.30. Let's start customer service review, okay, at 11.30. 30 minutes. That's all we need for customer service, okay? It's very practical, but some will be verbatim, okay? I'll see you guys. Bye. I sent the link in the chat box for the review for pharmacology.